In this tutorial, we're going to go over the various resizing options. If you select an object, I just clicked on the arrow and there it is, you can have snapping with magnetics on or off. We're going to turn everything off and allows us to just move this sucker around wherever we want. If we do magnetics, then that means that it's going to tend to want to go within certain lines, 15 degrees at a time. And it'll let you basically move it directly left, right, up, down. That's all very good. Then we have snapping. And with snapping, as we're moving, it'll automatically snap to other objects, which is the blue line, or the center lines, or grid lines, which are the yellow lines. You can change the distance for snapping, and what that'll do is it actually causes it to snap from a further dif distance away. I prefer mine to be at 5. The velocity is how fast it snaps. You can probably see that better if we increase the distance. You can see that there's a bit more of a wobble to that. And you know, I like to keep that at a fairly low number. And that's the magnetics and the, and the snapping. You've got flip horizontal. You've got flip vertical. And you can rotate 45 degrees at a time. And let's say you don't really want to rotate it by 45 degree increments. You can rotate it by 15 degree increments if you turn magnetics on and then you take your little green handle and as you can see it goes in 15 degree increments. You can also rotate by number. If you tap on the green dot you get this and let's say you want to go 45 degree rotation it'll rotate to the left counterclockwise if you want it to rotate the other direction, then you have to make it a negative 45. Typing in negative 45 doesn't really work. If you do 45 and then negative, that's how you change the orientation angle by a negative number. And then the orange box at the bottom is here for the bounding box. Let's say you want this to be your new bottom here, where I've got the yellow box now. Because I have snapping on, that bounding box automatically snaps whenever it reaches an actual side. We then tap the green, type in zero, and it just jumps right there where you want it to be. Once again, if you just want to change that around however you want, nice and smooth, you can do that. The rotation is always listed above. You can see it right there. I find it difficult to get it just where I want that way, unless I'm just using a visual and say, you know, I like the way it looks like that. You can tell it to fit to the screen. And if your magnetics is off and you do fit the screen, it will act one way. With magnetics on, 
it will act another. Now this one right here is a pretty regular shape, so let's see if we can get one that's not. Let's go up to this layer and do a fit to screen. And you see how it actually goes over on the top and bottom there? Hit the reset. Take the magnetics off and fit the screen. And it actually stops at the border of your picture. And then there are the types of resizing. I usually have it at uniform, which means you can grab any handle and it will do a smooth resize of the entire picture, keeping it in the same aspect ratio. If you go to freeform, this means you can take any of these handles and move them. And you notice with snapping on, it's just snapping back and forth there. If we take the snapping off, then you can basically distort it from the corner, from the sides, from top and bottom. And if we go to distort, this allows you to slide things up and down left and right. And then you have the warp. Warp lets you take these handles and actually move just a piece. And you can also move it from any of these cross points. It can get difficult. If you turn on advanced mesh, then you'll see those handles and you'll be able to warp things out as you see fit. With the warp, if you tap on any one of these handles, you can move that particular area to the front, to the middle, or to the back. Let's see how that works real quick. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And set this as a reference. And let's not do black. Let's zoom through a quick recolor. Okay, so let's go back to selection, and we've got the warp here. If I take this handle and I move it all the way over here like this, you notice how the leaf here seems to go in front of everything? We can sit there and tell it to move it to the back, and now it's behind. Uh, moving to the middle in this case isn't going to do much difference. Move to the front. It's something for you to play around with, test, and see how it works. And then for resizing, let's go back here to Uniform. If I tap on any of these handles, I can actually resize by typing in. So instead of 753, let's go to 800 here. And you'll notice that both sides change. 900... And there we go. If you tap on the little blue link so that it's white, then you're only going to change it in one dimension at a time. And then we have the types of resizing. I usually have it on bilinear and you can also choose nearest neighbor or by cubic. Let's see what the differences are on those. We'll turn these three off and we'll turn these three on. So we're going to do this one by nearest neighbor.
And what that does is it takes whatever the nearest neighbor is to the pixels you have and resizes according to that in order to fill in the extra spaces. This does tend to make things a little blurry. I'll just stretch that out for comparison. And on this next layer, we're going to do by cubic. So we select, we choose by cubic. And you can see with by cubic, that basically uses an algorithm um, that uses a cubic function. I personally don't like it, but other people might. Here's our bicubic. And then the last option, the one that I prefer, is the bilinear. And it uses yet a different algorithm. So let's stretch this out. And then we're going to zoom in and see what the differences are. You notice that they all get a little bit more blurry, and that's because you are using different algorithms. With this nearest neighbor, it gets a more jagged edge. With the bicubic, it kind of fuzzes the edge out a bit. And with the bilinear, it fuzzes it out, but not quite as much. So that's why I prefer the bilinear method of resizing. I hope that this has helped you understand the resizing tool, and you have a wonderful day.